It's a good morning to you and welcome to my testimony. We are at the park in Radisson uh, right here in Westlands, an amazing place where you can check out amazing stuff happening right here. And it's good to have you on my testimony again as we share, you know, amazing testimonies of people who've gone through pain, uh, fear, low self-esteem, brokenness. But today they tell of a totally different redeeming story. So from pain to purpose and from a huge test comes an amazing testimony. And today we are speaking to Linda Awori all the way from Kisumu. Karimku sana Linda. Thank you Anthony. And it's good to have you. I'm glad to be here. Linda you went through a season of pain and this pain was a result of uh, domestic violence within your own home. But this started way earlier. I mean, when, when you were a young child, you lost your father. Tell us about that. Yeah, at around the age of 13, we lost my dad. And being the firstborn, it hit hard. That was the first death we were seeing in the family. That was really close. So that, for me, as a girl, really hit me. Um, regardless of the fact that I didn't know it hit, you know, but I, my dad and I were quite close. He loved us, his children. So it was a gap. Um, I'm not meaning to say that my mom didn't do her bit, she did quite well, but the gap was there, especially for me as a girl and as a firstborn. So, so growing up, definitely uh, not having a father figure, uh, getting to a point where you're getting into relationships, you knew very well that a man will come and fill in that void. Was it deliberate? Was it conscious? Or when you got there, you discovered uh, it was coming, different? Coming to think of it now, yeah. I probably was trying to fill a void. Yeah, because even getting into this particular relationship, I was quite young. So um, then I, I didn't know, you know, it didn't make sense. I just thought I was a girl, you know, like fall in love with any other person and get married like any other person. But in retrospect, I think I was trying to feel to, to receive, you know, like uh, fatherly love of sorts, like there was this lack of, of this fatherly love. Yeah, I think so, yeah. And, and that happens a lot to people who've not had father figures. So for them, it's very easy to, you know, to get into some, let me call it the trap yeah. of wanting to be satisfied with that love. But how was it for you? I mean, getting into that, how old were you then? 18. About 18. Yeah, I just, I did uh, my fourth form at 17. Okay. And this relationship began in school. Because in high school. In right? high school because it was um, brother-sister school, you know, like I don't mm. want to mention the name of the school. <laughs> I know those are, yeah. Yeah, but it was that kind of relationship, you okay. know. I was quite young at 17, really. Wow. Yeah. That was young. That's young. Mm. So you meet this man. Mm -hmm. This boy. Oh, this boy. <laughs> How old was he? Uh, he was older about than you? three. Four years older. Ah, older than you. Yeah. Uh, of course, he's done with school. No. Okay. Yes. So you were, I mean, oh, of course, yeah. he was in the high school. Yes. You Different schools, but... Boys and girls yeah, school. boys and girls school. So you met him. So how did that develop? And was there conditions from your mother or your mother didn't know about what was happening? At, after high school, she got to know about it. Okay. You know, because I got pregnant. Oh, really? Yes. Okay. So really... After that, people have to know uh -huh. uh, the relationship and where it's heading. But she um, disapproved of it from the world go. Mm. But you know, at some age, you get to get to be rebellious and you think you're wise and you know what you're looking for you're an adult. in life. So, uh, yeah, I will not cover it up. I was rebellious okay. in terms of making those decisions mm. against her wishes. Right. Yeah. So did you move in with the man? At some point after, I, ha I have two babies with him. Okay who I had at home, uh -huh. you understand? I get you. And then later I decided, because of, of that, um, the, the way I missed my father's love, mm. uh, growing up, I did not want my children not to have a father. Right. That was a, desi a desire that I had in me. Right. So at some point, regardless of my mother's advice, I decided to try it out, mm -hmm. you know, see if this thing can work, can work. so that the children can have a dad. But, but then you guys used to love one another. Or, or was that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, then, then, it yes. seemed At like, that point, it yeah, seemed like. It seemed like. Okay. Yes, yes. So at what point did you now decide to move in with a man? 
Um, I think the, my last baby was two years. Okay. So that relationship was like five or four years old. Uh -huh. Then I decided to try and see if it would work out. Right. We both decided to try and see if it would work out. Okay. Remember at that point I'm like turning 20. I'm mm -hmm. still young. Yeah. So that's the point when we decided to move. Was he stable? Did he have a stable job? Mm -hmm. Why you? Okay. He, I had a job. You had a job? Yes. All right. I had a job then. Mm -hmm. uh, but I was still trying to see if it would work, work ah. if it would work out. All right. Yeah. Did you know anything about God then? Were you born again? I was in that stage where I was born again. Okay. But I was in that trying to stage of life, trying right. one leg in the world, one leg in uh -huh. church. So it was I was in that place. Okay. Yeah. So no, my I was raised. My mother was born again. Uh -huh. She served in church, so I knew about God. I had experienced God, but. It was a stage where I was a bit shaky in my Christian mm -hmm. walk. Right. Yeah. So here you are, mm -hmm. you start living with this man. Yes. So tell us how that started, you know, I mean, slowly developing into something very ugly in your life. Um, the ugliness had begun earlier. Okay. You understand? How did that begin? Um, there was, I, I can't really say there was a reason why. Uh -huh. I do not know whether the gentleman was insecure okay. even though there was a bit traits of insecurity mm. and control mm -hmm. um, regardless of those traits I would see them I would see the signs uh -huh. but I still wanted children to have a daddy wow. and you know and, and keep hoping that the man will change you know and, and be a better person mm -hmm. in terms of so the very first time he, he hit you mm -hmm. I mean, was it after an argument? What exactly happened? And how was that for you now moving forward? Okay, maybe if I break it down like this. Mm -hmm. I would be hit for a man saying hi to me. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, I can't really point out and say that I did this. I, I, I did something that caused him to hit me. Because I would be hit for a man telling me hi. Wow. You know, so how do you justify that? Mm -hmm. You can't say, oh, we moved to Alimi Salimia, so now... Mm. Uh, and, mean, because be... mutual in Salimia. and it began with slabs. Uh -huh. I remember an incident where I had taken, I had my firstborn. She was about a year old and I'd, you know, sometimes I'd go visit so that they would, you know, like interact. He would have a chance with the baby. Mm -hmm. And he went out, he left her there and it took like a long time. And he was, they stayed in Kondele, I stayed in Nyalela then right. with my mother. Mm -hmm. So the distance. So at around 6.30, I was like, let me take my child home. It's getting late. Mm -hmm. And we met at the gate. And because I was going home, I was beaten at the gate, wow. holding a baby. Wow. So, you know, you really can't explain and say, mm -hmm. oh, because of the reason. This. There is no reason. Right. You know, it's getting late. I'm just wondering, at that young age, eh, mm -hmm. did you mm -hmm. feel that this will, uh, you know, escalate to something deeper? No. Or bigger? No. Why? I never saw violence in my home. Okay. I saw the way my dad treated my mom mm -hmm. with so much respect and love. Right. We saw it. So it's not something I grew up expecting. Uh -huh. You know? It's not something I saw an example of violence in mm. any man. Right. My brothers never hit us. My father never hit my mom. So for you, you knew very well that uh, this is a passing cloud. I hoped it was. <laughs> <laughs> I did. All right. Yeah. So now, getting to live together, mm. it, it, get, it got even worse. Tell us about that. Um, it got really bad. Um, mm. uh, there were many other incidences before. Right. Uh -huh. um, where, you know, like, um, like I mentioned, I was in that place of, and, and I was not stable in my right. Christian walk. Right. And also to please a man. So there were days he would take you out, mm -hmm. you know, and <laughs> I don't know how to explain it, but then you would find you made a mistake you don't understand. Right. Yes. And so you go back home and you're hit for no reason. You don't understand why you're being hit. Mm -hmm. And that happened many, many, many times. Right. Yeah. So we, we come back mm -hmm. in a short while with um, Linda. Mm -hmm. And remember, now she's just started, you know, staying with this man. And things are getting worse every single day. There's a beating, there's violence. And there are children in this, you know, young relationship. So what happened to the children? And uh, eventually, eventually, did this stop? 
what exactly happened. When we come back right here on my testimony, don't go too far.